Hey, I'm Dan Thomas, and welcome to my channel for the Newbie Woodworker. Or anyone, really. My wife bought this wooden snowflake decoration at a craft fair, and she wanted me to make some more. Since this is the holiday season, I decided to make a video so you can make them too. But I want to get this video out as soon as possible, so this is going to be a rough video. Here's the parts. I'll put all of these in free plans on my website a day or two after publishing this video, so be sure to check it out. I'll also make a metric version of the plans, but you're stuck with imperial dimensions in this video. Sorry. I'm making it out of 1 inch pine, but you can make it out of just about anything, really. I made a cut sheet for a 1 inch by 4 inch board, which is actually more like 3 quarters of an inch by 3 and a half inches, and one for a 1 by 6 board, which is actually more like 3 quarters of an inch by 5 and a half inches, and that's the one I'm using here. The first step is to cut these three boards. I used my router table to round over the edges, but I don't like the results. This is the first of many things I'll do differently for the next snowflake, which I'll be making after I get this video out. For the next one, I'll just do some minor sanding to soften the edges a little. I sanded the faces and ends, but I didn't spend a lot of time on it, because this is supposed to be pretty rustic looking. Or so my wife tells me. I'm measuring and marking for the next cuts. I labeled the parts, but I didn't use the labels for my plans, because I hadn't added labels to the plans yet. Then I cut the long boards into the smaller parts. Next, I measured and marked these parts for the miter cuts. I decided to use an old-fashioned miter box to make the miter cuts. I've had it forever and almost never used it, but it ended up working pretty well. I don't have a miter saw or I would have used that, and I thought it'd be too hard to do this on the table saw. You can find miter boxes on Amazon or even at your local big box store for around $20, although they tend to be plastic instead of wood. I marked each pair of pieces so I knew which one went with which, although I'm not sure it really mattered. I've mentioned this Irwin pull saw before, and it worked great. For the six triangles, I left a longer board than needed, so I had something to hold on to while I made the cuts. I used my bandsaw to make the cuts, but I could also have used the miter box. I didn't use my bandsaw for the other miter cuts, because I wanted them to be as straight as possible, so they'd fit together as closely as possible. But that doesn't matter for the triangles. Time to assemble everything. I drew a center line first, then I marked where the tops of the other pieces go. You guys know I don't use glue very often, and that came back to bite me. I had some type on 3, which is for outdoor use in case my wife wants to hang the snowflakes outdoors, but it was too old to use. So I said screw it, and used type on 2, which is my normal glue. Unfortunately, my glue bot was clogged, and I couldn't get it clean. I had to toss it and order a new one. So I went with the Matthias Wandel method and dumped some glue in a disposable container and used pieces of a tongue depressor to apply the glue. This actually works pretty well, and I'm glad I tried it. Then I used this Ryobi cordless brad nailer I just bought to hold the pieces in place while the glue dried and to generally reinforce the joints. The reason I bought a cordless brad nailer instead of an air-powered one is because I don't want an air compressor and hose taking up space on the floor somewhere. At first I was thinking of getting the Makita Brad Nailer, since I have a lot of Makita batteries. But it had a whopping number of one-star reviews on Amazon, and the customer reviews show that the Makita is prone to jamming. But since I have one Ryobi battery for my cordless leaf blower, I checked out the Ryobi Brad Nailer, and it got great reviews. And it was way cheaper. In fact, it was on sale at Home Depot for about 100 bucks without a battery, so that's where I bought it. It can handle nails from 5 eighths of an inch to 2 inches. I'm using 1 and a quarter inch nails here. I'm still learning how to get the force just right, so that's why I'm using a hammer. If I wasn't in such a rush to get this video out, I would have taken some time to fiddle around with it and then reshot this video. But like I said, I want to get this video out. I tried the nailer out with Baltic birch plywood, which is pretty hard wood, and it had enough power to go through that, so I think I just need to learn to adjust it properly. I'll probably do a review when I've used it enough. After assembling the other two arms, I put it all together.
I think it came out pretty well for the first try. Obviously, as I said before, there's things I'll do different the next time. I forgot to film most of the next part, but here's what I did. I spray painted it, and I suck at painting. I attached some blocks to both ends of one of the arms and clamped it in my workmate. Then I spray painted a coat, waited for 20 minutes, flipped it over, and sprayed another coat. It obviously needs more coats. I mean, it was cold out. Get it? It needed more coats because it was cold? Anyone? Never mind. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check my website for the free plans, which hopefully will be available later today or tomorrow. There's also links to products and other related videos. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider leaving a comment. And if you want to see more content like this, click that subscribe button and don't forget to ring that bell so you'll get notified when I release new videos. Thanks!